Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Hey guys, happy leap year or leap day. It's February 29th. I am Jen Sells in Denver, Colorado, and my co-host is on here today. Hi, Katrina. Hi, everybody. I'm Katrina Carter here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Excited for today's topic. So today we have 30 minutes and sort of like on a call I did earlier this week, I, I, I hope I can jam it all in. And if not, then we can pick it up another day because this is a huge, huge, huge and dear subject to me. So let's jump in. Are you ready? Yes. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Right. So it has come to my attention that an excessively high percentage of real estate agents end up over their hat financially. It's way more common than you guys think. You may be surprised to know that even the highest level of producers Top producers out there find themselves scratching their head. One day they're looking at their bank accounts and they're saying, what happened? <laughs> it's true. So I've been out to many real estate agents entering the industry. The career has unique financial challenges that and you require some pretty careful planning and management to ensure long time success. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crucial to understand the breakdown of your commission checks and the required allocation uh, to in implement a financial plan to stay ahead in this business. It's not like, you know, when you go to real estate school that they say, hey, by the way, you are going to be 100% in charge of your commissions and how where you put them and how you allocate them i mean really do they tell us any of the things that we actually need to know for our business in real estate school that was the end <laughs> yeah you take the test and they throw you all to the wolves and you're like wait what just happened I, that wasn't in my that wasn't in my schooling right no so anyways <clears throat> Hold on. I got to keep moving our people around. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. So what happens is, you know, you get thrown in, you get that first real estate check, or you get maybe you're like really lucky. And the next thing you know, you end up with, you know, three or four or five commission checks in a month. You end up with 30, 40 grand in your account. You're like, yeah, baby. Let's roll out and grab a new, um, you name it, a, a poor shot, right? Instead of understanding that there's responsibilities that we have to take care of. So when you think back at the very beginning of your real estate career, um, did any mentor whatsoever sit you down and talk to you about money? I promise they did it. Instead, and as a matter of fact, in my case, I bet you were told to go out and buy a car and so that you had something to wake up to, to pay it for, right? I was 20, I think 24 years old, and I had a, a two-door Jeep, and I was sitting in a, a cold banker office, as a matter of fact, and there was a group of, um, sorry, I turned off my phone, and there was a group of, you know, prominent, established real estate brokers sitting in the, the MLS room is what we called it, and they were like, so we see you drive that Jeep. Um, you know what you need to do? You need to go out and you need to buy yourself a Mercedes. And I'm like, I can't afford a Mercedes. And they're like, girl, you need to go do that because it'll make you hustle harder. So, or you have to look the part. Or you do have to look the part. They, they did say, you know, you need to look that professional. So I need to go and do that. Right. So anyways, so you're, I just went totally blank. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's why we have our, our presentation to bring us back to, okay, what are we focusing on again? Yes. Oh, I mean, I got my notes here, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, 
They say, go out and buy that luxury car. Go out and buy the suit. Go out and buy that, that really fancy watch, especially if you're going to get into luxury. Um, your, your mentors, your peers, they all influence you to buy these apps, these tools, lead generation systems, contract, ma um, contact management systems, buy the leads, do all these things. And then as you, as you start doing this, you realize, oh my gosh, I, I'm in over my hat. I can tell you that the struggle is super, super real. And we need to stay in our lane and not try to keep up with the Joneses. I'm not perfect when it comes to money. I love my self care and I love my nice car. And, you know, my outward image is pretty important. So I get it, guys. Um, but we really need to understand in this commission, I mean, in this industry, how to take care of our commissions so that we can stay afloat. So, uh, the, the understanding your commission check breakdown. So let's get into this. Okay. Are you guys ready? This is, it's going to be a little painful for some people because the reality is going to set in, but you know, after we break down our commission checks, so you, you take out your brokerage fees if you haven't hit your splits. And then you'll have to understand how to allocate the rest of your stuff. So then I don't know what you guys, but I personally, when I bring on new agents to my team or I'm talking to new agents, I'm like, okay, so you get a check. You should immediately after your split, take out your 30% for taxes. Some of you say that's too high. I'm telling you, it's not too high. Push your 30% away and I'll explain it to you later. And then you take out your five to 10% for your retirement accounts. So here at EXP, you're lucky uh, because you can ask them to take that 5% out of your check. But I say take out another 5% at least and throw it into something else. Then you have to repay all your marketing expenses related to the property that you just sold if you were on a listing site. And then you have to determine what the um, amount you have monthly to cover your personal expenses. So, you know, if you're not doing this, yeah, you know, you're going to find yourself in trouble. Yes. So for sure. So which brings me to like a serious point. Um, I created a financial planning worksheet, especially for realtors. And uh, Katrina, I think I shared it with you. We can throw it in. Do you want me to bring it up now or do you want me to bring it up later? I think what we'll do is we'll throw it into the chat and then if I get into breaking it down, maybe at the end of, well, maybe in the next section here, we can pull it up and I can just show it to everybody. Okay. But um, I did create like a financial planner for, especially for real estate agents. And guys, I'm not by it's any something I can see what it looks like. This is it. Yeah. And so you can put like, you can put in your mortgage amount, you can put in your monthly payment. You can put in, like, if you change it, and at the bottom, you know, it puts in your credit cards and your real estate fees. You can put all that in at the very, very, very bottom of the sheet, which I don't know if she can show you right now. But let's yep. say you want to, so I have this little breakdown in there. Let's see if you want to, it talks about, like, exactly what your monthly fees are. That you actually know because I believe I'm working backwards in this business. So yeah, you have a lot of times your mentors will say, What's your goal to sell 25 homes a year? Your what's your goal to sell 75 homes a year? What's your goal? I want to net 300,000, right Or 200,000. But why are those your goals? If you don't understand your why, if you don't understand what you have to break down monthly, and if you don't understand what, like, if you haven't been with your financial planner to figure out what you need to live when you're 62, 63, 64, whenever you decide to retire, in most cases in real estate, um, I would say that the average retirement age is like in their 70s uh, <laughs> because we don't know how to save and we don't use these worksheets, right? But at the yep. bottom of my sheet, it literally, you can put in, okay, I 
I want to sell, I want to pull away like enough that my financial planner says I need to put 25000 a year away, or I want to put $54,000 a year away. But let's say it also calculates, let's say you're $20,000 in debt on credit cards or you're $50,000 in debt on credit cards. You can break that down and say, I want to pay those credit cards off in 12 months or I want to pay them off in 24 months. And you can throw those numbers into my little sheet and you can say, okay, if, but at the very bottom, if I wanted to pay off all the credit cards and if I wanted to pay off and then I wanted to drop in 54,000 and an average commission of $10,000, I would need to sell 4.22 homes a month. So doesn't that make more sense, guys, to understand what you actually have to sell to break even just to pay your bills and what you have to sell to get ahead, right? And then you can take the sheet, save it, and then you can manipulate it in different ways. So let so one of the things, and I'm going to get into it in the next section here, is I really feel like everybody needs to when they're selling, put enough, and it's almost more important than paying off your credit cards, put enough liquid cash in to live six months. Because Absolutely. if you did <clears throat> if you did it, you were probably one of the agents that fell out last year and turned off their license. I mean, you're how, yeah, I can't tell you how many calls I get on a daily basis. Uh, hey, Jen, what should I do? Um, am I, am I running this right? Am I doing this right? And we're going to have this conversation. So, and Jen, I want to add a really good book that goes along with exactly what you're saying and how you've laid this out. You guys have the book profit first. Um, there's actually a profit first for real estate agents. And it literally shows you how to do exactly what Jen said. And, but take it further by creating separate bank accounts to have allocated for each one of these. Um, so then that way, and actually having it two separate banks as well is one of the things I recommend. Doing that has changed my life. Because when you can't see it all the time, you don't think about it as, oh, I can always turn to that. It's just there and it's saved and you can finally have a little bit more peace in your life because you can take this and actually have it automated and and do exactly as Jen say. So profit first for real estate. I'll put the link in the chat. Yeah. So we're gonna put that little financial thing. Remember it's in the chat. It. Yeah. And we'll just throw up the screen again. And so you guys could take that copy and look at it. Just remember I'm not a financial planner. This is something I made for my personal self and I share it with you just because. So don't, you know, rely on it hundred percent go to a financial planner. And talk yeah. to them about these things. Any hoodles? So, um, let's just break down sort of a scenario, right? And I think a lot of people can relate to it. Oh, yeah. They can relate to it this way, right? So, you're like 50 years old, you have $15,000 in savings, maybe you have $100,000 in a retirement account, right? And which, by the way, if you had $100,000 in your retirement account last year, you probably have 60 now. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh, last year. Okay, so you have $50,000 in credit card debt. Let's say that that payment is, I don't know, $2,000 in bond. Your house your house payment is three $3,300 or $3,000. doesn't matter. Just throw it into that financial thing. Your car expenses are $1,000 a month with your insurance, your groceries are $600 or $800 a month. Your health insurance, $500, yeah, right? We're self-employed, it's more like 1000 Anyways, um, real estate expenses, let's say just basic real estate expenses, not including you know your listing marketing or any really cool tools that we have, $350 a month. I mean, if you're not selling a house, you are still in the hole about three hundred to three hundred fifty dollars a month. I don't care what state you're in. Yeah, um, I won't die. I will get into that. Um, except for you know, you have your your brokerage fees, your you know, and board dues, and 
you you may think that doesn't count per month, but it does because you're paying six hundred fifty dollars a year or whatever it is for your board divided up by twelve, right? The MLS you got to pay from the MLS whether you enter a listing or not. Uh, lockbox fees, and then you know you can add on websites and hostings and all these other things. And like you said, I'm not even covering like the oil changes, the gas amount that we use, the additional tires that we put on as real estate agents. Uh, a normal person probably drives 12,000 miles a year or $15,000 a year. I mean, 15,000 miles a year. I don't know about your average, but my average is like 24 to 27,000 miles a year on my car. That's an additional expense that you have to, to take into account in this career. Any hoodles, I'm like going down the road. <laughs> but if you did your math right and you and you took all those numbers that I just put in, um, if we were on that worksheet, which I'm not, but it's okay, you're running around seventy nine hundred dollars a month that you have to pay. So if you take your average commission and then you subtract out, and then you subtract out, um like the broker's fees and the taxes that you have to put back, then your average commission actually isn't bringing home the $10,000. Your average commission is probably $5,500 or $6,000 after you account for all those other things. So how many homes do you have to sell just to pay your monthly fee? So that's why I, this is why I'm doing this call today. I, I just don't think that we really think about these things. And then what happens? If you don't sell that amount of homes, then a lot of agents find themselves going into that tax, that tax amount, that 30%, and they start using that to live. And then the next thing you know, come May, March, if you have your LLC or S Corp or April, or you're, you're realizing that you owe $20,000 or $30,000 or $50,000 to the government, you don't have it, right? So this is why this sheet is so important and that we understand our breakdowns, right? Um, I'm going back through this and make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay. So you need this form. You need to know where you're sitting. You need to know what your finances are. You need to know what your monthly breakdown is. And you need to know how much you can. So if you know that you have to, to make these numbers every month and then you decide that you want to throw in X amount of dollars based on what your financial planner says, then you can take this worksheet or a worksheet of your own and you can drop it in and you can figure out work backwards. I say work backwards in this business. Um, don't just say you want to sell 300,000, say I want to sell this amount, this amount, and then be strict and religious about your money. I can't tell you how many agents get in so much trouble because they're just trying to keep up with the Joneses here. Um, if you know these numbers, you probably won't go and buy the car. <laughs> well, that, and I think it also brings to your next point, which is the importance of a financial structure, because when you lay it out, like the seeing what's household, what's business, it's like, oh, let me make sure I'm keeping these things separate. And it'll make me think differently about how I handle my money. 100%. Um, so there's a bunch of different questions out there that I think that agents don't realize they need to know. And here's some of I'll just go run through them. Do you have an EIN? Do you even know what an EIN number is? Does anybody on this call not know what an EIN is? Um, so your EIN, do you have your EIN? Do you have business checking? Do you have saving and business savings? I say, you know, you can have one or you can have two business savings. One you can put in all your taxes and the other ones you can just put in just in case you need it. Do you have an LLC or an S Corp? By the way, do you even know what amount of commissions you need to make before you start opening an LLC or an S Corp? I think you need to get with a financial planner and figure that out. 
you have dedicated credit cards for your business expenses. I think that's the most important one because a lot of times agents, they have their expenses mixed into their individuals. And then, you know, your CPA is like, can I have your expenses? And you can't find them. Then you have to sit down with, God forbid, an Excel sheet. <laughs> Don't do that. And then write in all your stuff. Okay. So do you have somebody doing your books? Do you have a bookkeeper? Um, right. Are you saving? Are you saving all your receipts? Um, yeah, I say throw them into a big box, um, big messy box. Reasons uh, why? Do you have a CPA? You, I think, and does your CPA specialize in real estate? Do you know how much you need to save? I've already talked about this, but do you know how much you need to have saved to retire? Uh, it's a pretty scary thing. And I'm going to tell you that I'm not even perfect at that. Uh, I can tell you that even with myself, it's a daily battle. And I need to come in here and remind myself at least once every four months, hey, Jen, you're behind. You need to do this. You need to do that. This is not something that I'm perfect at. But please jump in and figure out your numbers. If you've answered no to any of the above questions, you are active and you're actively closing transactions, please seek advice from somebody who's qualified as a financial advocate. And um, you know, as they say in the monopoly in the monopoly games, do not pass go. Get it done. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this up again. If you're working off of an Excel sheet for your expenses, um, I'm gonna assume that maybe you haven't produced enough to warrant fear. Uh, but having a capable CPA, um, help you structure your business is going to make your life a million times better. Setting up your S corps and your LLCs is going to save you taxes, going to um, give you tax advantages and liability protection. Mm, if you can hire a CPA or a bookkeeper or both, it's going to help you keep organized and it's going to reduce your stress so you can produce more and um make sure oh wait here's a really important one make sure if you hire a bookkeeper or a cpa then they are literally sending you reminders or pulling it out of your account and paying your quarterly taxes for you can't tell you how many bookkeepers and cpas that say that they specialize in real estate um don't realize that all of us are completely adhd and we get behind and they need to be reminding us, especially real estate agent, that we didn't pay our quarterly taxes. Um, mindset. Let's talk about that. So we're facing, so how many times have you ever gotten paid? And I know everybody on this call, everybody who's gonna watch this, there has been one point in your career when you are spending more on your tools and your, you know, your fees and all these things. And it starts to affect your mindset because you're not bringing in enough commissions. And then you're starting to feel like a failure. So, and then, you know, what happens is you go into your next listing appointment and you have what I call commission breath. Um, you can't just walk away when you should. If you can walk away, you're probably going to get more listings. And that's a whole different call. But um, basically, we have this overwhelming need to catch up with our bills and it becomes desperate. And so, please, guys, get control of your finances. Jen, I want to add something to that because I recently took a bookkeeping class. And just to know for myself, it made me better communicate with my bookkeeper. But I also noticed that I started attracting more business because it shifted my energy and shifted my mindset around clarity around money. Um, so exactly what Jenna's saying, knowing your numbers, even when you're not, when business is fluctuating, it helps you get clear on this is where I am. This is where I get to be in the future and what I get to do in the process to get there. And then deals just started coming and flowing once I got clear on all of that. So it yes. is important to focus on the mindset. 
financial stress can really screw up a business faster than anything, faster than anything else in this business. If you are not financially confident and if you are not, you don't have a plan, uh, you're going to be in trouble. So um, by setting aside your funds for taxes, retirement savings, marketing expenses, and the repayment, your personal expenses, you can build a really strong foundation. Uh, once you are in complete understanding and control of your finances, the stress will begin to fade. It's going to pay. And you will be able to not only save and feel confident about your future, but then you can start talking about investing, like investing in homes, investing in the other things that help you get there even faster. Um, one of the things I kind of want to bring up that I, I think everybody should talk to their financial planner about is what's called um, an indexed universal life policy. It's an IUL. Just write that down and then call your financial planner. And basically, I'm not like qualified to actually explain it to you, so I won't. But in layman's terms or real estate agent terms, I call it like a life insurance policy and a retirement policy all in one. It's, I think it's tax free. I don't know, but call them because honestly, I think that's one of the most important things that you should ever um, do. But for, for real, it's called an IUL, Index Universal Life Policy. Call your financial planner and have them break that down and explain it to you. And I think you'll call me or message me and thank me later. All right. So, anybody have any questions today? Is there anything in the chat? Anything in the chat? chat? Is there a way to get a copy of the Google Doc without requesting access? Um, you know what? I'm going to talk to Jesse about that because I know that he has a way of dropping sheet into the Asian Power Huddle that makes it easier. So, yes, I think what we'll do is hand it off to Jesse or Autumn, and then they can take the Google Doc or the Google Sheet and drop it into the Agent Power Huddle replace. Um, Let me see if I can copy um, the version that I have and see if I can remove the unrestricted access or make it unrestricted access real fast. You can okay. share on the on the Google Doc and then it'll, it'll let you select the setting like um, anybody with the link can have access, something like that. Correct. Since it's not my link, I can't do it, but I'll, I'll copy okay. it. I can make a copy version yeah. of it and then I can do it from my end. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it in there for sure. Anything else going on? Here we go. Any other chat? Um, those were the main questions there. Anyone have any feedback or have any? has anyone implemented any of this in their own business already or see things that they'll go ahead and use? Crickets. We're real estate agents. We don't implement these things. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. And she's laughing. I see her. She knows. <laughs> I was a bookkeeper for 25 years before I went into real estate. So all of this is completely my wheelhouse, although I don't follow it. Um, I, I like, that, and That's my point exactly. We may well have to do it. It's like mechanics always have broke down cars, right? Right, true. <laughs> I just, um, I just updated the or put a new link in there for the spreadsheet um, with uh, access to everyone. Rock on! All right, well, thanks, guys, and I think I'm gonna see you next week. So, you guys have a great day, and I hope you got value from this. If you did, send me a message. I'd love to hear about it. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.